This program was recorded on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Everyone has their favorite pizza joint, but I'm partial to my house. Join me where I'm going to show you how to make it from scratch. Growing up in a pizzeria with my dad as the chef, I couldn't go another season without doing a whole episode on pizza. Pizza is definitely something that I would consider my specialty, whether it's gluten-free or regular, um, it really doesn't matter. It's something I grew up making and something that I love to make and that is really requested by a lot of my in-home clients. Today I'm going to be showing you different ways to make pizza, gluten-free, regular, all the different toppings, a traditional way, and I'm even going to have a little special guest in the kitchen with me a little later on. So first I'm going to start with my gluten-free dough, and the reason that I'm doing that is because some people who have allergies to gluten or perhaps they're celiac, they can't have any chances of cross-contamination. So if I make my gluten-free dough first, and set that to the side. Then when I make my regular dough, there's no worries of any of that regular flour getting in here. So um, I'm gonna also show you the different types of leavening agents that you can use to make your dough grow, um, as well as two different ways, one with flour and one that's a little bit slicker with oil. So in front of me, I have two different types of leavening agents. I have a traditional quick active dry yeast, which is something that you're used to seeing at the grocery store. It comes in a jar or in a little packet. And this is the yeast that most of you at home have used before or have seen being used before. This here is a uh, dehydrated sourdough. So 100 years ago, 200 years ago, even just as little as 50 years ago, when my Nona lived in the mountains of Italy, she didn't just go to the store and buy a package of yeast to make bread or to make dough. They didn't have such a thing. They shared pieces of sourdough from one household to the other or dehydrated and ground it up so that they could have pasta, pizza, and uh, bread at any time. I say pasta because pasta is actually the Italian word for dough. So I don't mean pasta like um, a pasta dish. I mean pasta is the Italian word for dough. So this is a dried sourdough. It's basically sourdough bread that has been dried out and then ground up and all the live cultures are right in there. What's different about sourdough compared to regular, um, well, what we call now regular bread, is that it's been fermented. So this yeast here is already alive. We add some water to it and it activates the flour really, really quickly and we can bake it in the same day and that's it, that's all. But when sourdough is actually something that takes a little bit more time, it ferments, which means that the bacteria inside actually eat the gluten and turn it into something that our body can digest better. We do much better, um, us humans do much better eating fermented grains than we do eating stuff right out of the package. So that's what I'm going to talk about in a bit. I'm going to start with my gluten-free flour. This is an all-purpose gluten-free flour mix. It has a, different, a few different types of flours in it. I'm going to use about three cups here. I'm using a bowl because you'll see that this dough is a little bit different than traditional pizza dough. This gluten-free flour mix already has the stabilizers in them, which means it already has something called xanthan gum inside. If you're making your own gluten-free mix by using something like potato starch, corn starch, or rice flour, or something like that, you would want to get your own xanthan gum to add in. Because this doesn't have any gluten in it and it's not going to have any stretchiness, we need something to stabilize it and hold it together. And that's what the xanthan gum does. But this all-purpose mix already has that in there. To this, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the quick active dry yeast. The reason I like to do that actually is to, and to add it into the flour is so that it can start um, bubbling right as we start mixing. This is an instant yeast, so it doesn't need to be bloomed in, in advance. I'm gonna add some warm, tepid water to that. This one I'm gonna mix with my spoon, maybe a little more. I'm going to mix this one with my spoon. I want it to come together. We want the dough to be a little bit more wet than that. 
Gluten-free crust is always a little bit more wet than regular gluten crust. And it also comes together a little bit differently. As you'll see in this bowl, it's kind of sticky, but that's okay. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now it's coming together nice, like a nice little ball. Perfect. You can see the texture is a little bit different and a little bit gummier, but that's okay. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to put this towel over top of this and set this to the side so that it can sit and start rising. That's what the sourdough and the yeast does. It's alive and it eats the sugars inside of the flour and it starts to ferment them and eat them up. And something that I used to tell my kids at kids cooking camp is that the little bubbles inside your pizza are actually the farts from the yeast. Ha ha. They, they laugh so hard they think that's so funny. Um, now I'm going to work on the regular pizza dough. And the reason that I'm going to use the same scoop and everything is because the gluten-free crust has already been made and it's to the side so there's now no chances for cross-contamination. I'm using an all-purpose unbleached organic flour. You can use a zero zero flour which is a special type of flour that is made just for making pizza or you can just use regular all-purpose flour and even bread flour works as well. I'm going to do about the same amount. I've got three cups here and for this one, I'm going to use the starter. I'm going to make a little funnel here in my center. I'm going to add a little bit of this sourdough starter. You can see it's a little bit of a different shade than the, than the, than the flour itself. And same thing with this one. I'm going to use some warm tap water to get this started. But the difference between this dough and this dough is that when I do the gluten-free one later, I'm going to be using flour to knead back into it. And it's going to be like a smooth, soft texture. And what's different about this is that, oops, that's okay. What's different about this is that I'm actually going to be using a little bit of olive oil to um, mix this dough together. And it's going to have a different texture and a different way to roll it out all together. Please excuse my mess, my hair up and an apron on because everyone knows that making pizza from scratch is a messy job. But it's so worth it. You can see I'm doing this on the county here and making a huge mess, but you could do this in a food processor. You could do this in a bowl, or you could do it even in a KitchenAid stand mixer or something like that. And I just keep rubbing my hands and rubbing my hands to kind of get all the extra pieces off. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this and I'm going to keep kneading until this dough comes together nicely. Then I'm going to slick it with some olive oil and set it to the side with my other mapin on it. I said mapin. That's the Italian word for dishcloth. I'm going to get this kneading and get this to come together. And after the break, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like and the texture that you're going for. See you soon. Now my glutinous pizza dough has come together really nicely. I cleared off all the counter and it's beautiful. The way that I like to rise this one is a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of my bowl. Plop that on top. Get some olive oil on top and just spread it around so that it's coated really nicely. Of course, for the magic of TV, I pre-made some. So I've got my some glutinous pizza dough here that's already risen. This is sat on the counter for a couple of hours in a warm spot with a cloth over top of it. And it's given me this nice rise, which shows me that it's ready to make pizza with. Then I have the gluten-free dough. As you can see, it has not risen quite as much as the other one. That's because it's much heavier, but you can still see all the pretty bubbles. This one is not really sticky and kind of soft to the touch. And this one, as you see, is kind of a little bit sticky and that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to make a few on these little pans that I have here so that we can get to them into the oven. So gluten free dough, unlike regular pizza dough, needs to be par baked a little bit 
and that's because it's so soft as you saw and if you don't bake it a little bit in advance before you put the toppings on then you get that floppy pizza that nobody likes everyone likes a straight pizza so that's we want to achieve that by par baking that gluten-free crust all right because it's gluten-free, I'm actually just going to put a quick glove on and I'm also, because it's really, really sticky and I also don't want any cross-contamination and I already touched that with my hands. So look at this. Do you see how it kind of just comes apart really easily? I'm sure you've worked or seen other types of dough. It kind of stretches. The gluten stuff, the gluten-free stuff definitely doesn't do that. I'll show you one. So we're going to pat it out. And a trick that works for this works for a lot of other things. If you actually just wet your fingertips a little bit, it doesn't stick as much to the dough. Look at that. And then it's much easier to flatten out. I have my oven set at 475 convection, which is actually 500 degrees. I want my oven to get as hot as it possibly can get. A pizza oven can sometimes get, like at my dad's pizzeria, sometimes it's like 800 degrees and the pizzas will cook in like three minutes. You can't get your oven that hot at home, but you can turn it up to as high as it'll go. As you see here with the gluten-free ones, I've got parchment paper. And the reason I have parchment paper is because it is really sticky and I don't want it to stick to the bottom of my pan and then when we go to eat it, not be able to lift it up off the bottom. We want this to be able to come off nice and cut like a real pizza. All right, we've got my two gluten-free ones there. Take off my glove and switch them up. Now this is the most fun part. Watch this. Yeah, look at that. Now it's deflated. See, I don't need to... Um, have gloves on and it's not sticky. It's actually quite smooth and it comes apart, uh, sorry, it comes off my hands really nicely. I'm gonna give this one just a quick knead. We don't need to do that with the gluten-free one because it's kind of more like a paste than it is like a dough. And this guy got a little tiny layer of dryness on the top, which you saw. So I'm just gonna incorporate that in, perfect. Now at this point, you could actually take this pizza dough and you could pop it into a Ziploc bag into the freezer and you could freeze it for later in the week. And then when you're in a pinch, you don't have to order takeout. You can actually just make your own. So I'm gonna do two of these. No parchment paper. And I'm actually just gonna get a little bit of olive oil on my hands and give this a nice little grease here. All right. I like my pizza dough fluffy. I'm not a thin crust kind of girl. I mean, I guess it depends. If it's true fire burn pizza, I definitely like a thin crust. But for a pizza that's being baked in my home oven, I love it when it has all those nice little bubbles and the crust is nice and thick. I like to push the pizza dough out from the center to kind of create that pizza crust. And turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. Look at that. And one more. All right, on the break, I'm going to get all of my toppings together for my pizza. I've got some of my Nona's homemade tomato sauce and some uh, tomato paste and a few different kinds of cheese and my favorite dairy-free mozzarella. And I'm going to get these two gluten-free ones in the oven to par bake for about eight minutes. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to have a special guest with me. So we'll see you after the break. I've got my little friend Lydia here who's going to help me top my pizzas. She lives in this beautiful kitchen and I thought what a better and more perfect person to help me make delicious yummy pizzas. So I'm going to take this one and you're going to take this one, okay? And we're going to put what we like on it. I'm going to put what, you, what I like and you're going to put what you like. What do you like? I have pizza sauce, tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, goat cheese, fake mozzarella cheese, soft mozzarella cheese, and pepperoni. What do you want to start with? You want to start with some pizza sauce or tomato sauce? You want this guy? Okay. Can I squeeze it here? Sure. 
Do you want to spread it out yourself with a spoon? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to top mine with my Nona's tomato sauce. I'm going to do that at the same time. Fun. Okay, I'm going to put the spoon down if you want. That's perfect. Put it right there. Thank you. What kind of cheese do you want? I'm going to use this one. You want to try this one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. This is a traditional mozzarella ball and I've shredded it on the cheese grater and she's going to put it on top of her pizza. And I'm dairy free so I'm going to use this dairy free mozzarella that I really love. You want to do it at the same time? Sure. Okay. Awesome. Maybe a little bit on the edges too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And what about, I have some pepperoni here. Yeah. You want to put some pepperoni on our pizza? Let's do that together. So my gluten-free pizza crusts are par-baking in the oven. Actually, I think I just took them out. I did. They're behind me. They baked for about 8 to 10 minutes until they were nice and crusted through. When I touched them with my fingers, they were no longer sticky and they were a little, little bit crisp, but still soft inside. Oh, yummy. That looks great. I'm going to put some oil on top of mine. Would you like some on yours? Nothing. No, thanks. Okay. I'm going to put some basil on mine. Do you want some on yours? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you the baby basils. Okay. You can put that on. There you go. I'm going to rip mine up. There you go. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to go pop these into the oven and I'm going to grab these gluten-free crusts and you can start topping that one. Do you want to try this one with this or with this this time? You still want to do this one? I'm going to let you squeeze it. You want to squeeze it? You got to squeeze hard. Awesome. You can put that down and grab your spoon and I'm going to put these into the oven. Awesome. I think I'm going to use the same marinara sauce. See the gluten-free pizza crusts? They're already baked a little bit. I'm going to show everyone at home. They've already been baked. They hold together really nicely. They're still soft and a little bit raw inside, which you can see. And they're ready for us to bake. Yummy. That, one's awesome. that one looks perfect. That's pretty great. Okay, do you want to try the same cheese or do you want to try a different cheese? You want to try this one? Sure. Okay, I'm going to bring it over to you. And I'm going to use the fresh buffalo mozzarella ball. This is what you would traditionally find on a margherita pizza, which is the original pizza and the most traditional Italian pizza. This is made from buffalo milk instead of dairy milk, uh, cow milk. And it's fresh and pulled by hand, which is why it kind of looks like this. It's going to melt really, really nicely on my pizza. I'm going to use this one. And Lydia is going to use that one. Awesome. A margarita pizza is traditionally made with just tomato sauce, uh, mozzarella cheese, basil, and a little bit of olive oil. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to drizzle some olive oil on top of that. I'm going to add some basil. I'll add the ingredients. Excellent. One. Awesome. You want another one? Or is that enough? We can do. You can do a couple more? Yeah. Okay. That one is kind of broken. That is kind of broken, but it's going to taste delicious, right? Yeah. Good job. Anything else on there? That's really good. That looks good? Okay. Shall I get these into the oven? And see if the other ones are almost ready for us to try? Yeah? Ooh, look at that. They're not ready yet. Let's top the other pizzas while I talk about some stuff, okay? Okay, so you can top these two however you like, and I'm going to top these two how I like, and I'm going to talk to everyone about some stuff, okay, while you do that. Okay? You can do it however you like, with whatever you like. All right, so this pizza dough like this 
can actually be frozen from here. So she's gonna top these two pizzas however she likes them. And I'm gonna top these two gluten-free pizzas. And I'm gonna show you what I would do if I wanted to eat these later on in the week, okay? We're gonna bake yours though. So you bake them, you put whatever you want on them so that you can eat them right now, well, as soon as they're done, okay? So I'm gonna top these gluten-free par-baked. So with the gluten-free crust, you wanna par-bake it. If this was regular crust, I would be doing it just right on here. And I top it. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in saran wrap and pop this right into the freezer, just like this. And um, then when I'm ready to eat, I'm gonna take this right out of the freezer frozen and I'm gonna pop it into the oven just like you would with a regular store-bought freezer section pre-made pizza, but you know what's in it, you know what's healthy, and um, yeah, it, it's like, it's like making your own store-bought pizza. Isn't that better than buying pizza from the store from the takeout place? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. All right, on this one, I'm going to add some goat cheese. I'll add this. You're going to add that cheese again? Yeah. That's cool. And then on this one, I'm going to add regular cheese, regular mozzarella. And then I'm going to, do you want some pepperonis? Should I save them for you? Uh, no. No, I can have them? I'm going to put them on my pizza with my goat cheese and I have some spicy peppery arugula here. All right, I think these are ready to go into the freezer. So these I would wrap in saran wrap and I'm just going to pop them in the freezer. So I'm going to put them aside for right now. Do you have any toppings left for this or do you just want a cheese pizza for this one? I'll do that. You just do it that way? What about this one pepperoni? Can I put that in the middle? Excellent. I think our other pizzas are ready. Can you hear the sizzle? Yeah. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. It's noisy, eh? It, that's the sound of deliciousness. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we have our gluten-free one, which baked up really quickly because um, the crust was already par-baked. And then we have our regular pizza that is actually also nice and fluffy and ready to come off the tray. Can I get this off without burning myself? I can. Look at that. Oops. Cheers, everyone. Same with the gluten-free. Can I get that off? Look at that. Yummy, yummy. I'm going to cut this one. And I'm going to cut this one. Okay. Earlier in another episode, I made my famous chili spicy honey might be a little bit too spicy for you, but I'm gonna add some to my piece that I'm gonna try. You wanna try one of the ones that you made? Yeah? Okay. So a little bit of honey on my gluten-free pizza crust. Do you wanna pick yours up and we can cheers our pizza and we can try it together? Sure. Yeah, that's your, this one right here. I didn't. We didn't finish that one? We'll finish that one after, okay. when, when everyone goes away, okay? okay? You want to give me a cheers? Is it too hot? It's a little hot. It's a little hot? Yeah. Hot. Cheers. You want to try? It's hot. Mmm. Was, was it hot on your finger? Is it hot in your mouth though? Mm -mm. No? Is it yummy? Yummy. Now wasn't that simple? Yeah. See you next time.